Hello, good people of the internet. My name is Andy and you're watching Geek Curio. Today we're going to be talking about how to start out in miniature painting. But first, let's roll those titles. Okay, so you want to get into miniature painting. That's great. It's a fantastic, really fun and rewarding hobby. I paint a lot outside of work. I find it a good way to relax and de-stress at the end of the day. I also like to look at other people's work and start taking on some personal projects. But here's some of the things that you want to look at before you get into the hobby. Okay, so where to begin? First up is paint. And what I'm going to do, I'm just going to go over the top five, or my top five, it's always debatable this, paint suppliers that you can get. So number one, Games Workshop or Citadel. And these are probably the most popular paints that are out there. They come in lots of different styles. I will do a much more in-depth video on paint later to show what different types of paints available. Number two, Vallejo. So Vallejo paints are very popular, uh, very popular in other hobby communities. So people who are doing dioramas, different types of war games. They do a fantastic range on army colors. So if you ever go looking at Vallejo colors, a lot of it tends to be olive drabs, um, Prussian blues, stuff like that. But they also do the game color as well, which is more geared towards war gaming fantasy. Number three, the army painter. Now, I don't actually have any of these paints, but the bottles do come in the same sort of shape and size as the Vallejo ones. Once again, they're more geared towards your war games, um, battle reenactments. So a lot of their colours come in the same sort of style as Vallejo. Again, they also do a fancy range as well, which works really well for miniature painting. Or Reaper Master Series paints. Again, I haven't actually got any of these either. However, I will probably be getting the starter kit soon. Again, these come in dropper bottles, and these ones are much more geared towards the Reaper Minis line. And five, P3 or Privateer Press. I've heard a lot of good things about this type of paint, particularly their consistency, but I haven't got any to, or I've never worked with them before. Some honorable mentions out there, you've also got Green Staff World, which do quite a lot of specialist paints. So this one I've got here is one of their, part of their metallic colour shift. I think it's really, really great and works well, but obviously you need to work out what you're going to be using it for. I used this on an Alien Queen model that I did a few months back. There's also Humbrol and Coat the Arms. Humbrol tend to do paints that are best for model rail enthusiasts. However, a lot of it can cross over. Um, Coat de Arms actually used to make, I believe, this is only a rumour, but used to make the paint for Citadel. So they tend to be like the very old school, 1990s, early 2000s uh, Citadel paints. Now, a lot of you are probably sitting there wondering, these paints come in very, very small sizes. I can probably go out and get some acrylic paint for a lot less. I mean, these bottles, I think they're about just over two pounds, under three pounds, which would be about four or maybe five dollars each. Trust me, don't buy the cheap, big acrylic brands. The reason being is basically the pigmentation in the paint is very, very different. And you'll find that your, your miniatures will probably come out glossy or it won't come out the color that you're expecting it to. I would buy the acrylic paints if you're going to be doing some larger things such as terrain or something, but these will last a long time. Unless you're a professional miniature painter, this will last you at least a year. You'll probably find that you'll have some colours that you won't use as much and they'll last a couple of years. Things like um, white and blacks, which you would use for basing, will probably get through one or two pots a year, depending on how many miniatures you're painting. Okay, so next up is brushes. And to be honest with you, you can probably get away with probably some cheap starter set brushes, anything like that, as long as it's got a decent tip. Now, when you start getting into it more seriously, you probably will start experimenting with other brushes and brand name brushes. Here's the top five 
Once again, this is my top five of brushes that you can get. So at number one, we have the Citadel range. So again, from Games Workshop, they do some really nice brushes. To be honest with you, the expensive ones that they do, I'm not that impressed with. Um, however, their dry brush is very, very good. I do recommend that. Number two is the Army Painter. Now, I don't have any of these brushes on hand, but these are the ones that I use the most. Um, the ones that I have right now are completely knackered. Number three, Reaper. So Reaper do their own brushes as well. Again, part of the Master Series paint. I've had one of these before and it's quite a decent brush. Number four, Windsor & Newton. Now, again, there's a rumor that Windsor & Newton provide brushes for Citadel. The, um, I think they're called the Artifice, Artificer brushes. Now, me personally, I'm not that impressed with them, but I have heard some really good things about them as well. Number five, Humble. Now, I have actually bought some of the Humble ones before. These are actually for enamel-based paints, um, and I don't have any enamel-based paints. But these have worked okay on acrylic, but still my first choice would be the Army Painter. Now, I mentioned before that you can probably get away with almost any brush, as long as it's a small brush, to uh, paint your miniatures. And I have, in the past, bought some really, really cheap ones. Now, with the cheap ones, they can get a bit tacky quite quickly. So I'm going to give you a little bit of a tip. So have you ever seen the movie Big Fat Greek Wedding? The father tends to think that Windex is the answer to everything, can fix pretty much everything. I'm not going to use Windex, but in my family we use toothpaste. So I've actually used toothpaste when I was a teenager on my acne. And that does actually work, or I believe it does anyway. So I actually use toothpaste as a kind of brush soap. So you just get a little bit on there. Rub that on the end of your brushes, and this actually will clean the brush and will help you return the shape as well. So all I'm doing is just pinching it back into shape, leaving it as it is, and then later on I'll give that a wash. And that does tend to get quite a bit of the paint out of the bristles. It strengthens the bristles as well. I have never used brush soap, um, and I really would like to get some brush soap at some point, but for now, Toothpaste, obviously, strangely enough, does seem to work. I think it might have something to do in the toothpaste which actually helps clean brushes because at the end of the day you put a toothpaste on a brush, don't you? Let me know if that's helpful. You never know. Who knows? Okay, so you've got your paints, you've got your paint brushes. Now you're going to need some minis. So where are we going to get our minis from? So once again, I'm going to be mentioning Games Workshop again. They do seem to be the world leader in producing minis or at least marketing them and you will see loads absolute tons however if you are going to start investing in games workshop you will need to start investing in clippers glue all sorts of other stuff as well because they do come in small pieces granted the models are extremely detailed but if you're just wanting to get started easily and without too much expense i would actually recommend going with reaper now, Reaper are a company based in Texas, America. Um, they've got a hell of a lot of range. Like, the range is absolutely massive. And there's plenty of stockists over here in the UK. I'm going to mention Mighty Lancer Games. This is where I get all my Reaper miniatures from. And they also do a fantastic Reaper subscription box, which is only £20 a month. And you get plenty of miniatures, enough to last you a month to paint anyway, sometimes even more. I am actually going to be doing a video review of them later on this week, I hope. So once that's up, I will put the link up there. Some other companies that you might have heard of, you've also got WizKids. Now, they actually own the license to Dungeons and Dragons or Wizards of the Coast. So they are actually able to make miniatures which are identical to what's in the Dungeons and Dragons books. Two other mentions as well, you've got the likes of Mantic, who are a company based in Nottingham. They've been producing some really nice miniatures recently, um, and they actually seem to be quite a decent price as well. So they're one to look out for. Gale Force 9 are another company that seem to have a Dungeons and Dragons license, and they tend to do very specialist stuff. Again, it tends to be quite expensive and also very rarely in stock as well. So worth looking out for. 
Some honourable mentions, you've got Cool Mini or Not, um, they've done a few games. Modifius in the UK have done some fantastic box sets with miniatures as well. However, there are tons of miniature companies out there. Um, lots of independents, lots of new startups, and there's quite a few Kickstarters out there as well. I mean, I can name companies like Produs who are based in Poland and I got their Aliens versus Predator minis from them. Um, there's a company uh, not far from me in Middlesbrough which are doing uh, miniatures based on Labyrinth. Okay, so you have your paint, you have your paintbrush, you have your minis. Who's going to help you? Well, there are actually plenty of tutorials online and I'm hoping to do some in the near future as well. But there's also quite a big community behind the miniature painting scene which you can find easily on Facebook and Twitter. The one community that I recommend 100% to join is the Goblins of Mordor. They are available on Twitter and you can actually subscribe to their Patreon. And their Goblin King, Michael of Mordor, um, is a fantastic guy. Um, like I say, he has helped me uh, take my painting to the next level. He's full of encouragement and he's not afraid to tell you where you can actually improve as well. I have actually done a review of his Patreon and I'll put a link in they're up there and you can check that out and decide for yourself but for literally one dollar a month you can get a lot of help from michael there's some fantastic painters out there that you should follow as well the likes of gorilla with a brush goblin squire as well goblin squire is a fantastic painter i've actually ordered a commission from him recently and very happy that he's going with that and that's it from me for now so i hope this has been helpful and I will try to do some more in-depth tutorial guides on the free facets of a uh, miniature painting in the near future. If you have liked this, or if you feel that I could improve, please feel free to leave a comment. I do read them and I do try to respond to each and every one of them. If you like this video, please like it, please subscribe as well, and I'll look forward to you next time. Take care and stay safe.